Welcome to the SDA Housing Podcast, brought to you by NDIS Property Australia. Before starting this episode, we need to provide a general disclaimer. Information contained in this podcast is general in nature only. It does not take into account the objectives, financial situation or needs of any particular person. You need to consider your financial situation and needs before making any decisions based on the information in this podcast. And you should consider seeking independent and professional advice for your personal circumstances. All right, let's begin. Hello everybody, my name is Min and I'm your host today from NDS Property Australia here in Brisbane and you're listening to the SDA Housing Podcast, a show that explains, highlights, guides and brings awareness about all things SDA in this ever-changing NDIS world. Today's exciting topic is diversity of locations and here we have in the office with me, Erin. Hello. Matt. How's it going? So Erin, you brought this crowd together, what's going mm. today, what do you want to talk about? Um, I just want to talk about a little bit about um, why we're more focusing on other states and uh, developing in other states rather than Queensland at the moment because what we've noticed is Queensland is very on track to meet SDA demand at the moment whereas a lot of other states are um, in comparison very underdeveloped. So we just wanted to talk a little bit about it and say why we have um, sort of less Queensland stock at the moment and more other states. Uh, Min, do you want to take a little bit about builds? Talk a little bit about yeah. Build I guess um, the last twelve to eighteen months, a lot of investors, a lot of investment has gone into Queensland, mm. and as such, all the builders who have been associated with SDA have been stretched to the limit. Yeah, and mm. as a result, they're having problems in delivering because of, uh, and not their fault, obviously, because of the supply chain issues, the COVID, the material. We've, we've discussed this already in the last few months, yeah. right? Yep. Yeah. So we all know what's going on here. So everyone's stretched. Everyone's investing in Queensland. Everyone's promoting Queensland. It's a bit bit too much, I think. Yeah. And uh, we've been seeing it for the last nine months now. So, And now we're really excited about the other areas which we're, we're focusing on. Yeah. And Matt, those areas are? Uh, so we're mostly focusing at the moment on Perth, Adelaide, Melbourne, uh, and Tasmania. My favourite is Sydney. I'm really excited about Sydney because we've been we haven't really we've been trying to in Sydney, get into Sydney we? for a while. Yeah, yeah. B- because of the um, we'll talk about that in a minute. Yeah, so Sydney, New South Wales is definitely my flavour of the month. But um, your flavour of the month? What's so funny about that? It's just such a weird saying. Well, f- fine, my little baby. <laughs> so where do you want to start, Erin? Um, I guess we'll do because we had um, there's a recent podcast episode with uh, you and Rob where mm-hmm. you talk about Tasmania. So I guess really quickly we can just talk about Tasmania because there's a more in depth um, episode available already. So so how about we go jump to Matt? Matt, what are the Tasmania numbers look like? Um, so there's currently in Tasmania there's 126 total dwellings. Um, this is in Hobart. And mm-hmm. totally in Tasmania, you've got 250. And um, mind you, Matt, those are legacy group homes. They're, yes. They're the old stuff. They don't really count. So they will be phased out. Yes. Next. And I feel like there'll be a lot of flight uh, from less purpose-built accommodation to obviously newer SDA-specified accommodation. Mm-hmm. As of December 21, the SDA pipeline data showed only four under construction four houses being built in all of Tasmania. In all of Tasmania. Two wow. in robust and two in fully accessible. That's all there is. Mm, that's huge, yeah. So for a an investor, obviously, building there um, is a first mover advantage, you'd say. Yeah. I mean, oh, I don't remember off the top of my head, but there's like barely any HPS houses full stop. Isn't that correct, Min? Well, yeah, I think... So currently, uh, there's none in Hobart. In Launceston, there's three, and there's one in uh, Northwest. Uh, Bernie, I think. So yeah. there's four mm. HPS houses four in HPS Tasmania. Total, yeah. 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 So not a lot. So, there, so there's an opportunity to go to Tasmania if anyone wants to go in there, yeah. Yeah. Mm. And you're also look, looking at probably cheaper land prices yeah. as well. Yeah. Oh, 100%. There's so much land down there. 
Um, I guess we'll go South Australia next. Move up. Hmm. I think we've got about two or three packages there in Adelaide, Matthew. Uh, yeah. I think HBSs. For They're all, all HBS. Yep. What's the price? Yeah. Do you remember the price point in the stock list? I think it's about 800. Low 800s, I think. Yeah. 800 to But we haven't really had much um, opportunity to go to Adelaide thus far. Yep. What's what? What are the um? What the stats show there for existing and pipeline? So you've got existing. So this covers both legacy and obviously new SDA dwellings. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. About one thousand three hundred are uh, either in the pipeline or have been constructed or well, are legacy. Well, pipeline I see here in front of me, one hundred and three in the pipeline. That was as of six months ago. One hundred and three under construction. So yep, you take that from your total there. There's a lot, lot, there's a lot to replace. You've got legacy group mm. homes there as well. Mm. So definitely, uh, you know, it's the price is still around the eight hundred, seven hundred to eight hundred grand pricing. It's yes. pretty standard at the moment mm, around is, yeah. Australia. Yeah, we've had a lot of people asking for the lowest price, well, the lowest price possible. It's about seven fifty is probably the lowest I think mm. in all of Australia. If you, yeah. if you have to ask. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so. So we're starting to look into Adelaide now and South Australia. Yeah. So we'll see where we go from there. I feel like uh, Adelaide is probably not as developed as most of the eastern seaboard just mm. in terms of, I think, NDIS in its SDA form has only been in Adelaide about two years. Mm, I can't remember. It'll be at least two or three between years. Between Perth yeah. and... Um, Perth's only a year, yeah. yeah. Speaking of which... Move around to Perth. Mm. Well, we've got um, a lot of units. We've yeah. got the, that new set, the new set we've of units. We've just launched our uh, soft launch, the 15 units in North Coogee, called the Coogee Marina Residences, which mm-hmm. is pretty fantastic. Oh, yeah, they're really nice. Yeah, yeah, they're really so nice. nice. They're literally 100 metres from the water near the marina where all the boats are. And the apartments themselves, we were looking at them, they're actually really nice. Like they're Spacious. Yeah. yeah. Um, and each level has its own carer, and it's just like I feel like it's such a good – Location and building in itself. Mm. Every each of those two bedroom apartments are at least 100, 100, 110 square meters for one occupant. Yeah, that's bigger than a normal two bedroom unit. Mm. Um, and then houses wise, what have we got going on? We've got a few of them. Matt. About two, uh, two or three HPSs, which mm. is standard from one build, and then we have robust and IL. So a lot of a few robust coming out at the moment, which we have. Yep. Um, robust category is, is definitely a focus for us because we know that the the numbers for in the southeast area for Perth, 20 kilometres from the southeast of Perth, $112,000 for two robust participants. So we're working with one of our builders for custom that's design. Ye- that's yearly. Yeah, 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 yearly, yeah. 112 grand a year for two tenants. Um, uh, custom designed homes in infill areas, which are very unique. And we'll do a lot more robust and improve the building, improve the building houses. So Perth is still a unique area because it's the highest cost to build at the moment in Australia. I don't know why, um, but we're still focusing there at the moment because the numbers will stabilise in the coming few months with prices going down for labour rates and also um, supply costs. So that should be okay. Yeah. But again, diverse in line with diversification, we want to go around Australia and have. Perth different is op- a great location. Yeah, it's a great location. It is. Mm. Yeah. Uh, we'll leave New South Wales to last because yeah, yeah, that's your yeah, yeah. Just one favorite. point I was going to make on oh, yeah. uh, Perth, which I just try to keep uh, reiterating, is just that it's so early on, similar to Tasmania in mm. terms of uh, being doing SDA. Um, yeah. Just looking at the stats here. So uh, we've only got um, a total. This is um, in the pipeline or, or constructed of 250 dwellings in all of Perth. Not yeah. much at all. Yeah. And like, as you said before, NDIS has only been over there for a year in WA. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So it's really like, it's new. It's, Very new. It's new. Very like new. there's, yeah, there's big demand over there. And because it's only new, there's not a lot of dwellings to meet the demand. Yeah, exactly. Um, do you want to talk about Victoria, Melbourne? Yeah. Yeah. Um, Victoria, what's the population of Victoria? Four million or five million? About four to five million, yeah. So there's 120,000 plus participants in NDIS there, of which seven over 7,000, so 7,200, I think, are SDA funded. Mm-hmm. Of those 7,200, only 700-ish people, participants, are in a 
SDA dwelling, and they would be 450 dwellings of SDA um, compliant mm. for 700 people, participants, out of the 7,200. So that's only 10% of the people who are living in SDA home. Yep. So there's a massive, massive shortage um, at the moment for Victoria, and we want to spend a lot of our time and efforts in that category there, in that location there, region, um, regional Victoria and also Metro Victoria, uh, to go with the Tasmania focus there as well. So it, it, the challenge is finding the right builds in the right areas, but that's that's on our side to work with. But there's a lot of people who are very keen to get into Victoria and we, we want to be able to help out where we can, I guess. Yeah, Yeah. well, the demand is huge. Matt, so. talk about the um, pipeline for Victoria, please. So I've got here uh, that the total SDA funded participants is about 6,000, uh, which is, I think that's... Behind, the, behind, it's about 7,000, I think, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so this is from a few months back, um, and you've got the total dwelling, so that's including in the pipeline, um, 2,300. Do you have non-pipeline non dwellings, as in their legacy, in group home stuff at all, uh, demand-wise? We've got this 508 in That's pipeline, pipeline construction, yeah. Yeah, as of December. Yeah. So you'll be looking at probably 1,600, 1,700. Older product. Yeah. 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 So at some point in the next two to f three to four years, all those older homes that have been used for the participants will be phased out of the state-funded categories and moving into the SDA as we get more and more completed SDA product finishing mm -hmm. and also more and more SDA participants who are going through the AAT tribunal to get their funding approved as well. Yeah. So we definitely see a lot of scope. I mean, look, look at the numbers. 700 who are living in the SDA and the 7,200. So we've got another... You know, if the average home is two persons per house, we're looking at another six and a half thousand to so three thousand two hundred houses or dwellings to be built, and we're only at seven hundred at the moment. Yeah, and the pipeline here is only what five hundred, so we're still yeah. about three thousand to actually get under construction. So there's a lot of a lot of work to do in Victoria for sure. Yeah. Mm. Do you want to talk about your flavour of the month, as you call it? Uh, Sydney. Sydney, Sydney, Sydney. There's a lot of demand in Sydney. Um, land locked, not much land being released. It seems like our only way into Sydney really are the developers who are already building apartments in Sydney. So yeah. um, we've just got away the 10 units in Schofield, another eight coming up completion in August in Liverpool as three-bedroom HPSs. And we, ha we should have another, well, I think, another, what, 20 or 30 more in the coming six to 12 months, six to eight months, I think. Units, that is? Or? Yeah, units, yep. yeah, HPS yep. in Sydney. So it seems like for us, you know, it's really hard to find the right pr – the price is really expensive. We have one ha one builder who's got a HPS or robust house in somewhere in Sydney, $1.3 million. It's, it's very expensive. The land price is very expensive, hence the, why, hence the reason why it's so hard to get into Sydney for a house and land package mm -hmm. for SDA – but it's easier when there's a developer doing a mass volume or, or a large amount in one go, in one location, in one project. Yeah. Um, then it's easy for us to get involved with that to promote to the market for investors and also providers mm -hmm. and participants as well. So, yeah, um, that's that seems to be the easiest way for us. Just um, getting working with developers in advance as part of the redesign part of project releases here in Sydney and whatnot. I think uh, for us as a business, we are very bullish on New South Wales, Victoria, and Western Australia. They're the three for us. Yeah. The, the other moment, ones yeah. are the little side, just Tassie, Adelaide, and where else? Yeah, Adelaide and Tassie. They're just the small markets at the moment. Yeah. Yeah. Matt, your thoughts from people inquiring to the one three hundred number to you? There's been a lot of interest in. Obviously, Perth, our new stock that we do have in Perth. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like uh, there was a lot of interest six months ago for Adelaide, mm -hmm. um, but that's starting to pick up again now with our new stock. So yeah. um, people are obviously keen to get involved in you know, a reasonably priced uh, apartments, um, which are a great location in Perth. So I feel like that, that'll be... I think if anyone is price sensitive, their only option really is the villas when they do come up very rarely, if at all, yes. and the mm. units. 
Because everything else, we, we, we think about it, Adelaide, Perth, Tasmania, Melbourne, they're all in the eight 900 price range now. Yeah. Yep. It's getting yep. very expensive. Bill price has gone up. And it is what it is. I mean, they're the, the, the build costs, you know. Mm. The builders have to have their margin of profit to yeah. in, order, in, order, in order for them to deliver the houses that are completed. Otherwise, it's not feasible. Um, and also to kind of guarantee that they can complete it without mm. potentially having a shortfall. Mm. We've had a few providers come to us recently, Matt, mm. to you particularly, yeah. who haven't been able to access built stock because they've been waiting for the last year or so for completion of stock and they can't, they can't get it. Well, all the, all the stock has either been delayed out or land releases have been delayed. Mm. Um, and then obviously that's led to a lot of um, participants waiting around for mm. a product that they were supposed to get months in advance. Yeah, and they've come to us now to ask to tap into our product. Yep. Yeah. Construction. I feel like regional New South Wales is pretty untouched as well. It is. Tamworth is untouched. So anyone out there who wants to get into a, an area, fertile place for, for SDA opportunities, go to Tamworth, New South Wales. We have a builder there who can help out. He's doing some big things over there, but uh, great opportunity there. Um, Newcastle? Wasn't there flooding, rain issues down there? In the Just now, there? yeah. Yeah. But that was, the, um, that was the movement of the Sydney floods. They moved up yeah. north and hit Newcastle. Um, we'll have to talk to more to that provider you spoke to. Emma? Yeah. Yeah. Get more feedback. So we're getting more and more feedback from everyone around Australia with what their demands are, Matt. So it'd be yep. good for us to... Um, bring that awareness to investors mm. as well. Absolutely, so there's, Absolutely. Op- there's opportunity everywhere. It's just, it just it just comes and goes with land about land availability. Yeah. So I mean, there was an inquiry recently to you, Matt. I saw in your email that the client wanted to know what was the cheaper prices and our price is negotiable. But I mean, uh, if you, if you want to, I always say yeah. if you. If you want to buy a lot of different properties all at once, they would might negotiate with you on that. But in general, prices are going up, bill costs are going up. That's not changing. Mm. Um, so while the regular real estate market might you know go through its ups and downs, um, it's not as if labor is going to get cheaper, and it's not as if supply is going to get cheaper. So. Mm. Yeah, I feel like at the moment all builds, not even just SGA, is just on the up, mm. and it's probably going to stay that way for a while. Yep. Yeah. It is what it is. It is what it is. Blame lettuce and inflation. Yeah? Mm. <laughs> so we've had a lot of providers come to us recently. A lot of um, agents and brokers come to us mm. for guidance and advice mm. um, to access our stock that we recommend for our clients and investors. Yeah. Um, a lot of our listeners are coming to us confirming that they are really enjoying the podcast. Absolutely. Shout yep. out to uh, Cameron and Nicole. The hello. I uh, know you're listening to this this podcast. They said to us that they were really enjoying all the podcasts. I think Cameron's up to 42 or 43 and Nicole's up to 30 or so. And it's a, it's a point of discussion in their marriage, in the household, about all the SDA stuff. So we really look forward to talking to Nicole and, and, and Cameron and anyone else out there who's who's enjoying the podcast because we're at 4,500 plus now downloads. Yeah, correct. Um, yeah. I reckon we'll probably break 5,000 by the end of August, I reckon. Oh, it's 1,000 Because we're, we're yeah. averaging 1,000 a month, yeah, so yeah. we'll definitely break 5,000. Actually, it's only halfway through the month, so we'll probably break 5,000 by the end of July. Yeah, yeah. So we're really enjoying spending our time and effort in producing these podcasts. We enjoy everyone's feedback. Mm. They say they really love yep. listening to what we do. Yeah. Um, I really want to hear what uh, what people want us to talk about. Mm. Like I, if people want to send in questions, we'd, I'd love to do just like an episode of just Q&As. I think that'd be really fun. I reckon it'd be great for us to bring on a listener onto yeah. our podcast. Yeah. We should, we should bring on one or two people who, who can just ask us questions and mm. talk live, mm. a live podcast, mm-hmm. and see how that goes. Because nothing beats us being put on the spot and answer the, the questions, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Agreed. So, any, any final words of advice from you guys to our listeners about diversity of locations at all? I'd say our stock is moving pretty fast. So, I think my advice would be jump on things really quickly, especially those Kuji units because they've they already do, got so much interest. I think they're going to go so fast. Hmm. Okay. 
That's it then. I think those are, yeah. See you later. See you guys. Cheers. We hope you enjoyed this episode. Please make sure you are subscribed and following us so you can keep in the loop with all of our upcoming episodes. We would really appreciate it if you could leave us a five-star rating, a written review, and just share this podcast with those that could benefit. Until next time, catch you on the next episode.